Anyway, this is Roland Mitchum, missionary pastor for Harbor Baptist Church. This is our 11 o'clock service today. And as we start out, I'm just going to, I'm going to ask for prayer requests for me. I don't, uh, I don't often do this. These stones is, um, feels like I've got Roto-Rooter and Dark Vader or somebody in my plumbing trying to kill me. But anyway. Um, I have a funeral to go to Wednesday I'm supposed to go to, and I'm not doing all that well. Um, I'm not sleeping well, still lots of pain, and um, hopefully when we take the stint out tomorrow, a lot of that's going to change. We'll see. But anyway, pray for me. I'd like to go and be down there, and I, I really just don't know how all this is going to work out. It's been pretty much a challenge. So, if you have come to mind. Please pray for me. Um, got through Sunday school all right. A little difficulties on my end. <clears throat> but anyway, we're going to go a little different today. Um, I'm going to go back into John chapter 13. John chapter 13. And we're going to look in verses 5 through 7. In the Bible, um, we'll start off um, in verse 3. It says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and he was come from God and went to God. He riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. And after that he poured water in a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel where, wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I do thou knowest not now that thou shalt know hereafter. Now, Father, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for the word of God. We ask now, that as we open the word, that you'd help us to see the truth of your word. Help us to apply it to our hearts, that we might be made better by it and grow closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk this morning about the principles of ministry and ministering. You know, the, the word, the ministry, ministering, now those are, for most people, are scary words. We also uh, tend to look at them as what the preacher or people in church leadership are required to be active in doing. Uh, and in that, you would be correct. Uh, these words do strike fear in some because they're things that require uh, those in leadership to be active in doing. It, it requires them uh, to be involved with people. Um, there's a lot of, of little things that are tagged in there. But the question is, does that mean it's only for leadership or does this responsibility include every believer? I think as we examine the chapter, one will begin in this chapter 13, one begins to find Christ is doing all the ministry. And since that is true, we ask ourselves, or should ask ourselves, why is he ministering? I believe he's ministering because he's giving believers an example of what they're to be doing in his physical absence. Uh, I would like to recall to your memory that he now indwells within you. Um, he is leading by example, by revealing, revealing excuse me, <clears throat> by revealing in this passage what he desires his children to know and to continue doing. He reveals he reveals how to minister to those around us. You say, yeah, but we're not in leadership. And I'll say, really? You're not? You ever heard of the priesthood of the believer? Let me ask you another question. If you're not in leadership, who's going to lead the lost to him? If the lost will be saved, it will be by mine and your leadership. It will be because you see the need and I see the need to be active in some kind of ministry. It will be because you and I will see the need to be willing to serve in any kind of ministry that God desires because we saw the need to humble ourselves for that ministry that God called us to do. God has called you to a ministry. He has called me to one. That means it's time to get about our Father's work our Father's business, which he has called us to do. What work is that? Which work is that? It is what you see before you to do right now. Whatever God has revealed to you right now to do, 
do. So the purpose of this sermon this morning is to reveal the need of every believer to examine their lives in light of his word, removing every distraction from a life of service to him and to the lost. To the lost as well. It's also to your fellow believers. So we want to see three things this morning. The believer needs to be active in some kind of ministry. <clears throat> the second one is the believer needs to be willing to serve in any kind of ministry. It's not our choice. It's God's, remember? And the believer needs to have a humble spirit for the ministry. So as we begin, the believer needs to be active in some kind of ministry. I did pray, didn't I? Okay. Um, there is an inherent need in every believer's life to serve. In John 13, 5, it says, After he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, to wipe them with the towel therewith he was girded. Who was doing this? Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was doing this. If he had a ministry, should not we have a ministry? I believe it is. There is an inherent need in every believer's life to serve because we need to be as Christ was. He was our example. What does Matthew 6.33 say? It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first, let me translate that a little bit, to serve God and the things of God and pitch your tent after God. And then what happens? And all these things shall be added unto you. Your needs, those things that you need to to, to have in this life today. But first you seek the kingdom of God. You minister. We need to serve. Our whole life is about service, whether people realize or not. Without it, we are unfulfilled. We'll have an empty life. You can be saved, but if you will not serve, if you will not invest your life, you'll become so self-centered, you will sour on yourself. You'll be a negative person. You will always complain. See, it is the outpouring that we need to pour ourselves out into something. God has designed us, his children, to serve. Um, the Bible tells us it's better to give than receive. I, I've told you before, um, and I've really pushed it in our church of late, contribute, 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 be a part. Why? Because we are a body. We are, we are um, many members, but being many, we are one. We need to, to serve together. We need to contribute together. God has designed us to be that way. He has designed us to serve other believers. Um, he has designed us to exhort and be a blessing to them in our actions. He's designed us to uh, exhort and be a blessing to the lost and to God. What a tremendous ministry we have to the believers, to the lost and to God himself. We can glorify him with our lives. We can uplift others. We can see people saved and have an eternal life with God in heaven. What a blessing we have. If we're serving God, we will see those blessings. If we're not serving, well, the first thing I'm going to let you know is you've got a spiritual problem in your life. If you're not serving, you have a God relationship problem. There is an issue somewhere in you spiritually that needs to be rectified. Um, uh, we all have different abilities. We talked about this before. And we all require actually different areas to serve. Even if we do have the same gift, a lot of times, if we're in the same body, we've been a little bit differently designed because of our personality and our individualism that we need a little different ministry. Um, but God has a service or a place to serve designed for each of us in our local body. And we need to be in that local body uh, with that or, or, or exercising that gift. Um, the most miserable believers I know are those that are gibbies. You know, it's always about them. You know, well, I'm having this and I'm having this problem. You know, well, I'm so talented in this area. I remember I was in a ministry one time and there was always uh, people, other people ministering that would come to the lead. Uh, missionary, and, and they would always say, you know, we need to take care of this. You know, we need to do, and basically what they were doing was telling the lead missionary, you need to go and do this, or you need to go and do that. And he said in one meeting, he said, I'll tell you what, next time you come, anybody comes to me with a problem, come also with a solution for the problem, or don't come. He says, if God has shown you that issue, 
that problem, that ministry, then it's yours. I love it. I love it. And I think that's the way it should be. Now, uh, as a as a leader, God does show me more than he shows others. And there is a leading in that. But if God has laid on your heart different things, and I've had tons of things told to me and to my wife in the ministry over the years uh, that people want to tell you to do, but they don't want to do. Uh, every one of us has a service from God for God. Uh, God has designed us for and desires of us. God has placed in each of us everything we need to do to fulfill that service, to serve in the place he desires. I hope you understand, and I'm really trying to stress this, we are, as a children of God, designed to serve. And not only that, but let, let's, let's, when you write that down, write this too. Not only to serve, but to complement each other in our ministries. You, we don't go contrary one to the other. We don't get mad and blowed up and, and fight each other. No, sir. We complement each other. That's what makes unity. That's what makes the body grow. That's what glorifies God. That's what exhorts believers. That's what draws the lost to Christ. There are, and I'll, these are just, I'm going to make this mention, there are general or public ministries that minister to all in general. And then you have what I would call specific. There are, sometimes they're public, sometimes they're private ministries to individuals. Um, uh, like counseling is more of a private. Preaching is more of a public. Sunday school teaching is more of a public, you know. But then again, it depends on your age group, so it could be more specified. Evangelization, passing out tracts. You understand what I'm saying? There's different types of ministries. But uh, in the general ministries, to generally, we all are. But when you get down to specifics, that's God um, pulling you out into your individual sections and places that he wants you to uh, personally to be. Um, but we all um, should be on the altar of God for use. Uh, the only thing about a living sacrifice is it constantly crawls off the altar. So we have to ask God to forgive us. We have to repent of our sins. We have to get back on the altar. It happens. It happens. We get discouraged. We get downtrodden. But just we have to keep putting ourselves back out there for God. And, and with, with that said, we should all be on the altar for ministry or for use in the ministry. With that said, this is an internal decision um, to make. If you're going to serve in any in any ministry, um, I hear people say, well, you know, I, I got in that church and, and I was, you know, I didn't know it's the pastor. You know, in my case, you could say, well, he's overweight, so he's ungodly. So I didn't want to be affiliated with that and whatnot. Listen, there'll always be cracks in people. You look hard enough to always find the crack, okay? We're people. We're not perfect. We're people. Um, I have learned a very wise thing to do is to accept people exactly where they are, but it encourage them to grow at their pace. But you encourage them to grow. You exhort them. Uh, how do you do that? by being friendly, by being nice, by being a help, um, uh, by sometimes memorizing verses and when they're having a tough day, maybe give them that comforting verse. Um, maybe just sometimes take them out for coffee or a walk or just a phone call or a text. That is, you know, it's an internal decision to be serving in any ministry. And we reveal this decision in our actions and by our service in the body. Um, I have people tell me, so I love the Lord. I've been saved all these years, and they're still sitting on the back and don't do a thing. Well, I doubt your love, and I doubt your service, and I, to be honest with you, I quite doubt your salvation. You could be carnal, but after all these years, no growth, no, I'm getting nervous about this point, especially if you've been under solid preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Now, if you haven't, if you've been in a, a erroneous church, one that doesn't teach solid, if you do not take time to read the Bible, if you do not take time to walk with God, yeah, you could be calm. You could have never grown. Shame on you. Shame on you. But you could be in a church and you didn't know that they were erroneous and, and you didn't know what you were missing. Um, I've heard people say, you know, I got in this church. I never knew the church could be this way. Oh, tremendous. And so, that, yeah, that happens. But we reveal our decision to serve 
in our actions and by our service in the body and to others. Ministry may require uh, us to use our own resources sometime. I don't have a problem with this. Um, I don't, uh, I'm not known for, for being um, a very rich person, but I, I enjoy giving. Um, now, I do believe that everything God gives us, we, we it's for our stewardship, for our ministry to him and what he has given us to use. It's in the way that the Holy Spirit directs, not necessarily me. Now, there have been times when I've given money or, or done things that uh, I knew was going to be a loss that I felt the Spirit directed me to do it. There's been times I've, I've done things and afterward I said, you know what? I think that was me and not the Spirit of God. So it goes both ways, but that's fine. It's a learning experience, but it is his funds and it, everything he gives us is for his use. Some of those things that he gives us uh, for us to use and he desires that. And then others are to we to, to pass the blessing along. Channels of blessing. And I, you know, I looked that, that, that up this morning. It says, is your life a channel of blessing? Is the love of God flowing through you? If you're not a channel of blessing, the love of God is not flowing through you. If when people see you, they run because they don't want to hear about your life's aches and pains, then apparently the love of God is not flowing through you. You're not a channel of blessing. Are you telling the loss of the Savior? Are you ready his service to do? Make me a channel of blessing today. Make me a channel of blessing, I pray. My life possessing my service blessing. Make me a channel of blessing today. That ought to be every believer's prayer. I'll read the rest of it. Is your life a channel of blessing? Are you burdened for those that are lost? Have you urged upon those who are straying the Savior who died on the cross? We cannot be channels of blessing if our lives are not free from all sin. We will barriers be and a hindrance to those we're trying to win. Tremendous, tremendous song. We need to be channels of blessing. We need to be willing to give what God has given us and to use it in any way the Holy Spirit. If we're not willing to do that, if we're not willing to use of our own resources, I do believe there's a spiritual problem. Because God says, give unto them as it's been given unto you. God says that the believer should be a cheerful giver. And I, I think this is, these are things that God, he said, it's more blessed to give than receive. These are principles in the word of God. Those who would use of themselves understand that principle. They understand that all they have is of God. If he has directed and given you to use, um, well, can he not give you back and replace it? We talked about this before. Money's nothing to God. Your life is nothing to God. He can give that. You know, he can raise the dead. He, can, he owns the whole world, all the wealth they're in. But your love for him, your relationship with him, your devotion to him, you're willing to serve him as your choice. And you need to make the right choice here to choose him above all other things. I think as a principle, the, the, the believer needs to understand or be willing, let me just put it that way, to be willing to give back everything that God's given them freely as a free will offering if, if, if God so directs them. Um, because he's only going to bless us when we're willing to freely give to him and to the causes he directs our heart toward. So with that said, we'll move on to the next one. The believer needs to be willing to serve in any kind of ministry. In verse 6 it says, Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Simon and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? It's almost like, man, that's below you. It kind of, in a way, I, I take it to Peter's thinking, he said, man, I wouldn't even wash somebody else's feet. And here you are, my Lord, doing it. It's below me. I'm not going to do it. We, we, may, we need to be willing to serve God in any way he directs. It's not, we're not calling ourselves to ministry. We're not calling ourselves to salvation. We haven't died on Calvary's cross for ourselves. We're not God. He is. We are the servant. He is the master. We need to start acting like it. I think we've got a little too big for our britches. I think we now believe that I have um, uh, all these crops I put in. They're in my barn now. I just lay back and take a rest. What happened to him? God says, thou fool, thou soul shall be required of thee tonight. See, 
It's not a hearse. And the quicker you get a hold of that principle, the better off you'll be. And a matter of fact, to be quite honest, when you get a hold of the principle of giving, we're trying to do this faith promise in our church. And um, uh, it's a little slow to take on, but and maybe I just represented it wrong. I didn't quite, I'm not the most talented preacher in the world, but I think once you get the concept of giving, and the blessings of God, and you give out of your heart of desire to, to please God because you love God and you want to do the things he wants you to do, I think you're going to be shocked at what God can do in your life. But as long as you're stingy-hearted, as long as you keep your purse strings closed, you can go look in, look in the book of Haggai. God put holes in your pocket. You will not prosper the way God would have you prosper because he can't bless you. You, we have to be willing to serve where God directs. The truth is, God never rewards one with service um, to see if they'll be faithful to serve. God already knows your heart. He doesn't. He's not doing this to see if you're going to be faithful, but He does reward faithfulness and service. Um, I think the idea here is, when one is willing to serve in general, God will reward with a specific ministry. Again, he that is faithful a little will be faithful much. You have the person with the one talent, the five talent, the ten talents. God, as he sees our faithfulness, will reward us. And not everybody has the same amount of talents. And as far as abilities, I guess you could say, talents, abilities. Um, but when we're unwilling to serve in general, how can God give us a specific ministry? We've proven ourselves to be unfaithful. We've proven ourselves to be unworthy of anything greater. I told you before, I started with clicking a switch and you know, cutting on a light. My wife had to remind me. Honey, 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 pastor's coming, you can cut on light. I had to take off. Finally, I got the hang of that. And about the time, well, I don't know if I really got the hang of it, but anyway, I got an opportunity to move up to, to ushering. Um, and I like that. I mean, I was really, uh, I was Johnny on the spot with that. And, and, you know, as that went, and I, God kept opening the abilities for me to minister more. I love ministering. I love the opportunity to, to be a blessing to people. It's just something my heart, God, has made me. So when God gives a place to minister, it's to prove your faithfulness to other men. God already knows where you're going to be. It's to, he, he gives us these places to minister that will help us grow our abilities to minister, to help us continue to grow closer to him, to, to allow other people to see and, and reap the blessings, but see what God is doing in our hearts. People need to understand also, and this is a little bit of a, a rabbit trail, they need to understand why we do what we do. People need to, and I made this pretty much a philosophy, and it's probably really come to fruition a lot here in Nanaimo more than any other place uh, because of language barriers and things, but people need to have the freedom to seek after the answers they need. Why are you a Christian? Why do you go to that church? Why do you read the Bible? Why do you believe there's a God? Well, what does he say about this? What does he say about that? And they need you to reply in a non-condemning, non-bigoted, but in a humble, loving way, in a caring way. People need the opportunity to ask the questions they might have. That's how you learn. Ministries are people-specific, and we need to be willing to minister to the individuals Answering questions, believe it or not, is a ministry. Because you sacrifice to place yourself out there and allow people to talk with you and ask you anything you want. And, and I tell people, ask me anything. You're not going to offend me. And I have learned if you're asking, you're listening when I tell you. But if you've got somebody that just wants to talk, they're not listening to learn. I don't like people that talk all the time and, and, and um. They just want to captivate the conversation. It tells me they're running from something. They don't want me to address something. They're afraid I'll uh, answer the, or say the wrong, um, ask the wrong question or something. I get nervous about that. Okay, what are you hiding? What is it? Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's something. But it's that two-way street of conversation, asking, answering, asking, answering, where you actually build that relationship and get to know each other. Um, people um, also when they're following leadership uh, they they follow better when they understand the reasoning behind the actions of the leaders so 
well, I say this to say true leaders, and, and, and this is because we're talking about ministering and ministers. Let me get back to it. Principle of ministering and of ministry and ministering. Principles of ministry and ministering. Because we're talking about that, uh, true leaders lead by example. And uh, when actions seem out of place, people struggle. I was, I, I've said this many times, talk about the, the man that took the trip to Israel and there was a, on the tour bus and, and there was a bunch of sheep being chased by a fella. And he said, oh, there's the shepherd. And the tour guide said, oh, no, that's the butcher. He said, the butcher drives, the shepherd leads. True leaders lead. In other words, we, we open ourselves up. Um, we take whatever actions uh, that we can take to help people that need to understand, to try to, 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 to be with them and uplift them. Whatever action we may take, though, they need to understand the reason behind it. And I, and I have to say I'm probably not always the best and clearest on that, but I try to be. But um, my communication skills probably didn't make the A-list. But, you know, I, I try. I try. It makes sense to me, but sometimes it doesn't make sense to others. Um, one other thing about true leadership. True leadership really is serving those to whom you're ministering. It's, it's service. Um, if you're not, uh, any who will not serve, um, they don't need to be in a place of ministry um, uh, or leadership, I guess I should say. A person who will not be a servant literally, in my opinion, has no right um, to be in leadership. Uh, every person should be you know, willing to be accountable. And, if, and see, if they're not willing to, to be a servant, they're saying, hey, I'm not accountable, I'm above you. That's not true. Uh, nobody's above anybody else. God's above us all, but we're all equal before him. And we minister to each other, and we need to be accountable to each other. Um, I tell my people all the time, when I'm preaching, listen, don't take my word for it. Go and search the word of God. You know, be what, what the Bereans were. Search and check it out. Um, I'll make a few more statements, and then we'll go to the last point. Um, those in leadership actually should be more accountable because no one is above accountability, and they have more to be accountable for. Uh, so uh, if you're going to lead somebody or a group of people, um, you should be a blessing uh, to them um, and those you lead. I'm sorry, my mind's getting a little muddled here. I'll just leave with this. To lead others should be a humbling experience. You should realize the, the magnitude of the ministry God has given you and, and react in such a manner. So the last point is the believer needs to have a humble spirit for the ministry. I kind of just led into it. Three seven said this, and Jesus answered and said to him, "What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter." If Jesus was willing to answer Peter, the pastor should be willing to answer his flock. Being answerable to those who look to you keeps you in your reasoning balanced. Um, and, and, and really, you know, uh, people in the pastorate, uh, people who are over uh, any kind of organization, it's easy for them to get blown out of proportion. Um, and it's, it's really, really, really important that we don't allow that to happen in the ministry because we could destroy a ministry. We could bring reproach upon the name of God. One bad apple spoils the whole bunch. I remember there was a man and he was, he had somewhat against me. And um, I had never done anything to him. And I asked him, I said, did a pastor in the past do you wrong? He said, yeah. I said, do me a favor. Let me make my own sins. You know, if, I, if I'm going to mess up, let me mess up. Don't, don't, don't put theirs on me. I'm an individual. Yes, I make mistakes, but I'm an individual. Don't put somebody else's fault on me because I'm not going to put them on you. But being answerable to those that look up to you or, or look to you for guidance keeps you reasoning, your reasoning balanced. Um, and, and those that follow you, they need to see that balance in your reasoning. They, they need to, that builds trust in, in your, your character. It builds trust in your ability to lead them. And they understand, okay, well, he may make a mistake, but, you know, he's going to come clean with it. He's going to let us know. 
you know, and he's going to tell us. So um, not only that, but answer being answerable gives the leaders protection. And it all he gains that trust by that transparency. I think that's very important. Um, I have met people in ministry that believe their actions are above question. And that is never true. No man's actions are above question. I remember a pastor told me one time, he said, um, he had a deacon. He said, and everything he did, he questioned him to death. He said, he always thought that man was against him. He said, and then he learned later on, that man was the best friend he had because what he was doing was making sure he had thought it out well. And if he hadn't, the questions he'd ask would get him to go back and think it out and then come back. So he was keeping him safe by asking these questions to make sure he thought it through. What a praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's no there's no problem when somebody wants to vote against and unless it's you know something wrong in their life. But a lot of times there's always going to be somebody that will vote a little differently. And it's good. It keeps it on our on our toes. We need that. Um, just leave it that every believer, leader or follower must be willing to be called into question. When you have to understand that as a church, congregation, people are following you, even if you're leading armies or whatever, when, when they don't know why you do what you do, doubts are going to arise. And that doubt is, it destroys the, 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 the morality of the group. Am I saying that right? It destroys their confidence in you. So you have to be careful with that. Um, all that we done, and it says right here, he says, Jesus answered, said, what I do, thou knowest not now. Um, all that is done may not be apparent at the time we do, it, but it should be in due time. Um, when doubts, where there doubts exist, you know, we need to understand that's not real faith. There's, there's a problem there. And when doubts arise in the minds of people, they cannot follow us in faith if if they, oh, well, you know, I don't know if they're following God's leading or not. You know, I don't know. Be very careful of how you lead people. Um, the purpose of our actions should be revealed before the doubts arise. Um, just by, you know, men and God are on the same level. And we're not dealt with the same. So um, men must be held to accountability. God is never held to accountability. He doesn't have to. He's God. He's above us. He never does wrong. He never lies. He never cheats. He never makes mistakes. Men are sin. God is sinless. God does things in our lives that he does not reveal to us. But we will know in time. Um, there are things that God is doing in, in our lives today that we have to take by faith. Look at this pandemic that we have going on around us. I hope you understand that God's doing something here. Um, I'm going through these these stones, these kidney stones. Um, and I learned a long time ago when I was going through shingles, God never wastes pain on his children. There's a reason for it. Um, I was, and I'll just share this with you if we have time. I'll probably finish up a little early today. Um, I got kidney stones. Um, I had a five millimeter one. Um, Sometimes a grain of sand gets into your eye. What happens when that happens? Boy, it can really mess your, your sight up. I mean, if you had one grain of sand in each eye, you wouldn't be looking at anything. Because it just, it's painful. It scratches your eyes. But you take a grain of sand and put it in an oyster, what happens? It produces a pearl. That grain of sand in that oyster is enveloped in that fluid that forms that oyster, that pearl. It becomes part of that oyster. That grain of sand in that eye or that kidney stone is not a part of it. Never will be a part. If, if I've got one sitting in my kidney, that's a persistent threat. It could come loose any time. That, that is not a part. Now, it started out as an irritation in the oyster, but it ended up being a gem in the end. It will always be an irritation in the eye. It will always be an irritation in your body. You understand what I'm telling you? One was incorporated into the, that body. One is never incorporated into that body. 
God does things in our lives that he does not reveal to us, but we will know in time. He's not wasting his pain on me. He's teaching me lessons. There are things we just take by faith, trusting him. Shingles, I took by faith. This kidney stone, I take by faith. You know what? God has never been wrong, not once. And he's not going to start with me. It's not going to happen. With that said, if we're not willing to trust God, how can we ever trust men? How can we ever have a ministry if we're not willing to trust God with our lives? It's got to start somewhere. And it should start with you as a child of God, humbling yourself before God. There is coming a day when men will see more clearly. He said, what I do is now, thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. There's coming a day when you're going to know. You're going to know why God has done what he's done in your life. You're going to know why God has allowed what he's allowed in your life. You're going to know there's always been a purpose and a plan by God in your life. Some of us are going to be sad because we did not submit to God. We rejected him. Some of us are going to be able to rejoice because we did submit to God. We did humble ourselves. Some of us are going to look back and see all the things that God has given us that we could have given to others and helped others, been a blessing, and really done a lot in our own hearts and lives, but we rejected that. Some of us are going to see how we could have given more, but even in our giving, how we were blessed of God. What am I telling you? You don't know the reason everything's happening in this world today. You don't know the exact reason God has placed this pandemic, he's placed you here. But I can tell you two things he's definitely doing. He's making you a minister of God, and he's giving you a place to minister. Yes. God is opening the doors of ministry. Um, people say, there's never been such a time as this. I say, you know, you're exactly right. The fields have never been wider to harvest. God is preparing so many hearts in these days and ages, and yet we uh, look at them as such a negative time. They're not. They're not. This is the day which the Lord hath made, and I shall be happy and rejoice in it. And by the, the grace of God, I'm going to see souls reap for him, and you should too. I'm going to allow God to do a work in my heart, and you should too. In closing, there's coming a day and all that has been done will become clear to men. Those who are saved will understand more of the working of God in their lives as he drew them to himself, as he orchestrated their lives to help them grow closer to him and enter into his purpose for their lives. The lost will realize with horror that only they will know that God had orchestrated their lives so they might come to know him. He had orchestrated their lives that they might come to know him. And in all that he allowed, but instead they cursed and rejected him. And that day, they will realize eternally too late for their salvation what God has been doing and trying to do in their hearts and lives. For this reason alone, we as children of God need to be active in the ministry. We need to be willing to serve in any place God opens an opportunity. Every believer should seek to guard themselves to ensure they have a humble spirit for the ministry. <clears throat> For the ministry that they are given by God, mind you. A humble spirit to do the work, to point others to him, that the lost might be saved before it is eternally too late. Let me remind you that the attitude and manner in which we serve God could turn one to or away from him. Away from his saving grace, I guess I should say. Let us ensure that our attitudes and mannerisms are what they should be and that they are pleasing to him. So in closing, let me just ask you this. Is there anything in your life that God has touched on today? Is there anything that God has told you it's time to make a change in this? If he has, 
And your present need is really to take time to do that now, to deal with him. So let me encourage you. Let's get it right today. Let's get back on track to where God would have us. And let's minister to those around us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this day. I thank you for each and every one that's able to be here with us live. I ask for a blessing for those who will be on later, possibly, or will see this down the line somewhere, that you use it in their hearts and lives to change them to draw them closer to you. Oh, Lord, help us to be more like our master each and every day. We love you. We trust you. And pray to the Lord that you change our hearts to be in tune with his. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me encourage you to spend time with God each and every day. And that you have a good day. God bless.